All righty then. I don't know. I had uh, technical difficulties. I had set my recorder for uh, an hour, and I really wanted to make a uh, video for 19 minutes and 30 seconds so that I could post uh, what I record on my Facebook page and uh, it was running overtime so and I really didn't uh, intend to speak about uh, Sonata TV more than that uh, 19 minute time limitation that I gave myself but it's all good and we're going to get back on track. This is part two of my response to the Sonetta TV apology. And we know now that Sonetta wanted to come clean and apologize to the Hebrew Israelite community. And uh, that is a good first step. But as I said in my uh, part one, the best thing that you could do if you wish to reach your highest potential is not only not being biased to the Hebrew Israelite nation, brothers and sisters, but to all of us who are out here striving and trying to awaken our people to what some of you may call black conscience, I just want to awaken the people because there are questions of the black. There are questions to the African. There are questions even within those things that you want to bring to us the history, the question that must be raised. And these who wish to raise the questions, you should not be biased against because you are pro-African or you are pro-Black or you're pro-whatever in your personal view. Our people on, our people are on different levels of your black conscience. Some are just kindergarten and some are on a higher level. And there are those who believe they are on a higher level and they are still kindergarten. And on this part two, I want to express some of that. And when you listen to what I have to say, then perhaps you know why Google uh, terminated my channels, you may understand why so many black African people don't want nothing to do with me. Whether pro or con, they do not want this information, that which I present, to be given to the people free of charge because then the people would begin to really examine and think about everything that we're taught, not only by that not only that which was given to us by our enemies, but that which is given to us by our teachers. Y'all look the master teacher. To teach means to train. What are you training me to be? Training you to be black. Training you to be African. But is that really what I am? What caused me to be black? What caused me to be African? I want some of you to tell me where on this planet, where even in history, where dark-skinned people called themselves black, where dark-skinned people called themselves uh, African. Many of these names originate in their origin from a racist construct. There was no black, there was no African prior to the European did not exist. There's no 
Nobody was interested in race. Nobody was interested. We were divided because of uh, nationhood or ethnic uh, reasons and other things. And male versus female, gender, class, but never race. So that is a question in and of itself. Did more exist? Did Hebrew Israelite exist prior to the Europeans giving us the Bible and this other information? To my knowledge, a more can be a Caucasian person. A more can even be Christian. So where are we getting our information from? All these things must be examined and re-examined. Because if they were true, then why are not you free? As your scriptures say, the truth shall set you free. And how long have you been a Hebrew Israelite in this nation? How long have you been a follower of Elijah Muhammad in this nation? How long have you been a Garvite? How long have you been... Uh, 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 more and, uh, and all these other things that we embrace and we continue to fabricate and make up stuff all the time but yet you still suffer and you still are in this squalor explain that to me I want to make some points before I close this particular topic and Again, much respect and success to Sanetta and his uh, media outlet. And if you do the appropriate thing, I guarantee you, you will be a very successful person. And you will go and be with our ancestors having pride. And you will always be remembered for being that uh, catalyst that caused the beginning, the genesis of the true awakening of our people. However, if we are denied access to certain information, when we censor ourselves, what is the purpose of censoring ourselves? I don't fear nothing a Hebrew Israelite has to say. I have Nothing to fear. I don't fear nothing a Muslim has to say or more, or any of us, but we want to and wish to censor other people. Why you don't want them to listen to other points of view? Because some of us are not really looking for black liberation. We're not interested. What we're looking for is to convert people to a religion or convert people to a political idea, we're looking for slaves. This ministry called the Realities Temple on Earth do not want you to be a slave to anybody with a black face, with a pink face, with a brown face or a red face. I don't even want you to be a slave or a servant to some God. You should be sick of serving people and being their slaves. We need to come up out of that. Now, I want to make these points before I close. Brother Ali Muhammad, I'm very impressed by this young man. And many of the, of the things he say, if we acted upon it as a people or even as a nice, strong group, there's a great possibility it could work. But, you know, I, I don't like Ali Muhammad. See, we're so childish. I, I, I don't like Sanetta. I, we are so childish and silly. If Caucasian people thought the way they did, they would not have a United Snakes of America. We may not like what they uh, have created or produced, but they did it as a as a one unit 
and nobody was running around talking about, I don't like George Washington. I don't. Well, actually, there were people like that, but you had so many of us that came together. You had so many Caucasian people who came together and supported George Washington and Ben Franklin and the forefathers of this nation. It made no difference. And that's the way we need to be. And they became the leaders. And if you don't like it, go back to Britain. If you don't like it, go back to Ireland, wherever the hell you come from. So if you don't like it, then I don't know where y'all blacks going to go. Because we're going to be running this. And see, that's the thing y'all don't understand. All of us who are supposed to be awakened, all of us who claim to have this superior knowledge, we are the leaders. We can run this. It don't make no difference what the other 40 million or 70 million black people talk about in this country. If you got your act together, if we got our act together, we can run this. We have the knowledge and we even have a lot of the support from our people in general when you do the right thing. But when you, as long as we're doing the wrong thing, looking incompetent and silly, you're not going to get that support. Oh, come on now. So let me hurry up. I only have about eight minutes. Let me talk about two points that Dr. Uh, Ali Muhammad uh, brought up. Like I said, many of the things that he spoke about, there's a great possibility they could work. They make sense if we uh, really supported it and gave it a shot. Brother Ali Muhammad was talking about how child support has devastated black men. And I guess no black woman, no sister should, should uh, cause their men to get caught up in the uh, child support system. Well, Dr. Ali, yes, it is devastating. However, it is devastating that a black man does not support his children. So if he's not going to pay child support through the racist and unjust child support system, then how is he going to support his children? It's devastating that his children do not know him because he's not around. It's devastating for that black woman because she was in love with that man. And many times because of on petty reasons, because we have a, just like Dr. Uh, Francis Cress Wilson say, may the ancestors uh, be pleased with her. May she rest in peace. She said that we have a childish infantile mentality. So why is it devastating for this black man to go through the child support system, but you ignore his actions have devastated the heart of this black woman and these children. And it's all about this poor black man. All oh, the child support got him. Brothers, let me tell y'all something. There's a consequence for everything that we do. We must be responsible and be held accountable for everything that you do. So how do you hold this man Accountable. How do you hold this man responsible if he does not suffer uh, going through the child support system? You want to pass. Many of you talk this way because some of you may find yourself caught up in the child support system. Brothers who pay their child support you don't hear them complaining about the child support system. It's not perfect. You might pay. Some brothers are paying a whole lot. Some brothers are paying very low. But you know, but that what happens as a consequence of our actions. If I walk up to you and slap you in your face, the consequence might be you might just simply turn the other cheek. Or you might take out your pistol or your knife 
and get to stabbing and shooting, there's a consequence for our actions. So you're trying to tell me that these men who have who help put, bring these babies in the world should not have a consequence for their actions. And oh, woe is me. We're supposed to sit back and cry for, for them because of something they caused. No, 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 no. I understand, but no, you don't get off that easy. Because that sister and those children, they're not getting off that easy. She's taking the money and she's doing this. Then you fight for your babies. There are many black men. They tell me, I love my children. They really don't make a real effort. I used to go to court all the time, family court. I don't never, I have never seen lines of black men standing in line, trying to fight for custody or visitation right with their children. Really, they're not interested. And see, so since we're men, and we might fall in that same category, then we want to talk all this bull crap. There is no woman, if I had children, there's no woman or no cracker that is going to keep me from my babies. I will die in the effort. Dr. Ali Muhammad goes on to talk about changing your name and some of this other, you know, legal stuff. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but I do, but I have become a jailhouse lawyer. In fact, I was able to gain my own freedom from incarceration through my own paperwork. I have, if you do a Google search, you can see where I have filed pleadings and motions all the way to the United States Supreme Court. So I know about the law too. What he talks about is not as, 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 as simple yet complex. When it comes to changing your name, it's very simple. Go to a family court, ask the court clerk for the, for the papers, fill it out, turn it back in, pay the fee. Sometimes you don't even have to pay the fee. Ask the clerk, even if you even if you are do have means, still, you know, you can still fill out a form and uh, you can uh, proceed as a poor person or what they call informal pauperous. You proceed as a poor person and they may reduce the fee or you may not have to pay a fee at all. I was able to change my name legally for nothing at all. I proceeded as a poor person because when I changed my name, I was unemployed, had no income, so I took advantage of it and changed my name. Wow, my man, this, this time is this, it's going so quick. I'm going to have to mess around and make a, a, a part three. It's going to be short, I guess, <laughs> because I really didn't have that much left to say, but you know how it goes. You have so much fun. You know, time flies when you, you're having fun. And I want to conclude on, on that. So, you know, uh, the law, especially when it comes to us trying to get justice, you know, and the legal system is against us. So many of the things that Ali Muhammad talks about in a legal fashion, <laughs> it's going <it's, laughs> to almost null and void. It's very difficult, whereas it can work because the laws was designed to protect the racists. I'm going to say that again. Our problem is that the law was designed to protect the racists. So how can you get really get justice in a system designed to protect the unjust? Going on to part three and the conclusion of our little talk here.